What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today marks part one of the hero balance. We're going to be talking about the regular heroes that they're going to be added here. There's some major changes to some key heroes and we're going to talk about how each of these individual changes affect you if you happen to be using these heroes. Now, as we get into this, I want you guys to keep in mind that this is only part one. We're still waiting on the information for the Moonlight heroes, but I'm super excited that Super Creative Smilegate gave us these notes to kind of hold us over so we know what kind of buffs are coming for the regular heroes while we wait for the MLs. From what they say, the MLs is not going to happen. The ML or the hero changes in general are not going to happen until August 8th. So we're kind of just standing by. We got three weeks, or two weeks until this happens. But, you know, limited banner next week and then big changes the week after that. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive on in. Hello, heirs. This is Super Creative. Today, we would like to inform you about future hero balance changes, which are scheduled for August 8th. Additionally, we, would, we will inform you of changes of the summon system, certain Moonlight hero changes, memory imprint improvement, and skill renewals by the end of July. We are focusing on two areas when it comes to hero balancing. First, we are searching for a solution to the meta freeze due to some overpowered Moonlight heroes. We're deliberately going through internal steps to increase the diversity of heroes in the meta and are trying our best to have it revised as fast as possible. Also, a thorough verification process will be added to prevent this situation from occurring again. Secondly, underperforming heroes will be regularly rebalanced. Before the balance patch we had in June, we promised to have regular hero rebalancing every six to eight weeks. We hope this upcoming balance patch gives you a better experience in growing heroes and creating your own strategies and tactics. So first up guys, we got Lulica. Lulica attacks with an intense elemental force. Damage dealt increases proportionally to the amount of the enemy's lost health. That was before. So now she attacks with intense elemental force with the 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns. Damage dealt in increases proportional to the amount of the enemy's lost health. Her third skill used to have a 75% chance to decrease defense for two turns. And now they're, what they're changing here is they attack all enemies with the power of ruin with the 85% chance to decrease defense. And now Cash's attack increases every time the skill is used and can stack up to three time versus just the damage dealt. So when they talk about Lulica, they say that Lulica was initially designed as a mage who was beneficial when used in long battles due to the fact that her skill, Wave of Vengeance, increases damage dealt. However, her other skills ended up being ineffective due to the high dependence on the skill, Wave of Vengeance. Therefore, we made skill adjustments while maintaining the original concept of a mage who was beneficial when used in long battles. The skill, Wave of Vengeance, now increases attack instead of damage dealt. This in turn influences damage of the skill, Wild Wave, and the barrier granted by Regulus's Blessing, which is their skill too. Not only does the skill Wave of Vengeance get stronger the more it is used, but Lulica gets stronger as well. In addition, a defense decrease feature has been added for the skill Wild Wave. We have changed the, the design so that it works in a defense decrease role by increasing the defense decrease probability for the skill Wave of Vengeance before its attack increase effect stacks. All right, so let's talk about initial impressions here <laughs> and how I kind of look at this. The problem with Lulica before was not her skill three or her skill one, okay? That wasn't the issue. The issue was that when you used her, or for instance, when I tried to test her out and I used her in a PVE situation, the problem was that instead of dealing significant damage, she opted to go for her skill two, which the defense buff and the barrier is great. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's not bad. The problem is it's like when you could land a killing blow, you would choose to opt for defense buff and then the team would just fall apart. So before her issue was that she was just better as a manual hero than she was as an auto hero. So when I look at this and they're like, okay, well, we just increase the damage of skill three and add defense break to skill one. It adds a lot of utility to Lulica, a lot more utility than she had before because now if you're putting her in an auto comp, even if she decides to use a skill two, she has a higher chance to put the defense break up now since defense break is on her skill one. So it's just gonna, even if she's derpy with her AI, well, not really with her AI, but <laughs> she just decides that she doesn't feel like dealing damage today because she's on break, then the rest of your team can still pick up the slack. However, like if I looked at a total rework of Lulica's kit, all, in my opinion, all they would really had to do was 
change her skill 2 to an attack, right? Like a single target attack. Let's say her skill 2 has a 35% chance or a 30% chance to decrease defense on skill 2 while buffing the defense and applying a barrier to the, your team, right? So now she has damage utility, boss utility, still has a defense break on 3, who cares about her skill 1? And I think that just would have been a better play just because now she has versatility everywhere. Now she has one shot potential on two, right? Depending on what the multipliers are on two or at least assistance potential plus the buff for the team. So now it has utility versus like just adding defense break to a one. Although still helpful, it still only kind of band-aids the, the issue that she had instead of like actually making it to where you want to use her everywhere. Granted, her damage output, I think, is going to be a lot higher now with the way that they cha change Wave of Vengeance with the attack increase. And, of course, with the, the extra defense chance on one, because now if you're positioning her in, let's say, a Wyvern 11 team, now you have more chances to break defense, which in turn speeds up your run, makes your runs more effective, even if she decides to buff defense and add the barrier, right? So one of those things, we'll have to wait and see. Again, like I said, her skill 2 AI-wise was the issue. She's still a dope hero, like, if you're manually, right, before, but now you have better chances of autoing <laughs> in an auto situation with Lulica. I have my Lulica 6 starred Full Awaken, I think. When they make these changes, I'm sure we'll get free gear removal again. So when that does happen, I'll test it, I'll give it a run, and I'll let you guys know how she pans out. So next up, we got Balan Suzanne. Let's go. Damage increased by 30%. Damage dealt proportional to damage. To debuffs increased by 50%. And last Requiem cooldown is decreased by two turns. Wow. Hello. Okay. So Balance Suzanne is a mage who inflicts various debuffs to the enemies and deals damage proportional to the number of inflicted debuffs. However, the damage of Dark Cloud, which resets the cooldown count of Last Requiem, was not strong enough. So Balance Suzanne was not preferred among players compared to many other heroes who, who inflict debuffs. True. Improvements have been made to the skills which will balance the relationship between Dark Cloud and Last Requiem and the damage of Dark Cloud. Interesting. The basic damage of Dark Cloud is increased by 30% and the damage dealt proportional to debuffs is increased by 50% so that Balance Zan will deal more damage proportional to the number of debuffs inflicted on the enemy. Okay. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and say this because Balance Zan, like you know, like I mentioned before in the video when I was talking about heroes that should be buffed. When we talked about Balance Zan, I was like, yo, dude's multipliers is lower than lower than a baby that's walking and that's crawling under a table, right? Because they are. Like the dude hits like a, a a plush pillow. And now, now, you're talking about a fifty percent increase to damage output, right? It's he he's gonna hit hard. Like really hard like really 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 hard so it's it, it's gonna be interesting to see especially with last requiem the cooldown being reduced so much he's gonna be able to get harmful effects up like this just boom 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 right and then being able to just keep that constant pressure up and dealing more damage based on harmful effects present uh, what they did was now that the cooldown has been reduced in a way where he can use his abilities more frequently, it's going to make up for the lack of damage that he had. Not only that, but now the damage increased by 30% overall, plus the damage dealt proportional to debuffs increased by 50%, Balance Suzanne is going to be a threat, like a big threat. PvE threat could be potentially PvP threat if you, if you can stick the harmful effects, especially him being an AoE hero so he definitely has nuke potential now wow for my balances and users be grateful because this change is really significant um to your teams and i wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing balances and in a cleave situation in a mage cleave situation actually i wouldn't even mind pulling balances and now i'm kind of kind of kind of salty that i didn't try to pull from him when he, when he was in the mystic summons <laughs> Uh, give me balance uh but yeah yeah he's he's gonna be good y'all he's gonna be good and to my people that don't have balance Suzanne, kill balance Suzanne, or you could get into trouble because picture this guys dizzy balance Suzanne is gonna be disgusting all right just, just throwing that out there it's gonna be a little disgusting so i just want you guys to know and players that have balance Suzanne, that have dizzy I think you guys should maybe take a look at what type of teams you're running with these two heroes. Because if you're in a position where you can stack these two debuffs, 
and then you know make it work to where they're helping each other out you could put yourself in a really strong situation guys all right guys so let's talk about ludwig so before he attacks with light with a 50 percent chance to stun uh, the enemy if, if the enemy was defeated by this attack the caster is granted invincibility for one turn and this was his skill two um, Moonlight Blow has the same chance to stun, except it grants invincibility to the caster for one turn without having to kill an enemy. Now, when we look at his skill 3, it attacked all enemies and penetrated defense by 50% if the caster was invincible, and a critical hit will grant the caster a barrier for two turns with strength increasing proportional to the caster's attack. Now, they changed it to where it penetrates defense by 20% up front, an additional 30% if the caster is invincible. A critical hit will grant the caster a barrier for two turns with strength increasing proportional to the caster's attack. So it says the condition for being granted invincibility was too difficult to achieve as it required Ludwig himself to specifically kill the enemy. The condition has now been removed and Ludwig will be granted invincibility whenever the skill is used regardless of whether or not an enemy was killed. Also, Call of the Moon will now penetrate defense by 20% and an additional 30 if Ludwig is granted invincibility which will make the damage more effective and balanced regardless of whether or not Ludwig is granted invincibility. So my take on this is, I mean this is cool and all, you know, with the skill because now it grants invincibility regardless of whether or not you kill, which I think will add utility to Ludwig overall. But, big but here. <laughs> the whole thing with Ludwig is when you're setting up a cleave, you're setting him up so he can be invincible, so he can launch the skill three. So the fact that, yeah, it's great that he's gonna use Nocturne magic and penetrate 20% defense up front and an additional 30 if the caster is invincible, it doesn't really make sense because the positioning of the cleave is so that he kind of does his thing while somebody gives him invincibility, right? Does that make sense? So it, it's still the same. It's still absolutely the same. The difference is is that now that af if he survives through the cleave or the enemy team survives through the cleave and Ludwig gets another turn, he's going to buy himself more time with the skill 2. So like with the skill 2, now he can one-shot somebody else on the team, right? And then give himself invincibility to extend. In terms of anything else, like, I just, I mean, okay. Okay. I mean, and, and that's cool. That's cool and all. I think they've extended his survivability, so he'll be able to be in a team fight long enough. But the issue is that Ludwig can still get CC'd. He can still get CC'd. And in my opinion, man, there wasn't really much changed here. Like, I, th it's a big deal that a skill 2 now grants invincibility regardless it's just, all right, type deal. Like, he's still pretty much the same, essentially. <laughs> now, in terms of his attack law enemies on his third skill, being able to penetrate defense by 20% at all times, regardless, that's still good because that's going to definitely increase his damage output and add some utility, especially if you're using him in outside situations other than PvP. It's just, if you're going to rely on that, he has to be in a situation that's going to allow him to survive longer than two turns. So... PvE. This is going to take some testing. You know, for my Ludwig users out this, let me know how you guys feel about this. Is this going to help you guys out? Is this making it so you, you're like, yo, I'm putting my gear back on Ludwig today. If not, you know, let me know why. And if you could change something about Ludwig, let me know what that would be. Just make him full ignore defense. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't turn him into Lucian. <laughs> but anyway, next up we got Tenebria. So... The probability of debuffs landing is less competitive when compared to other heroes. I've tried to literally read this paragraph like four times. <laughs> there, therefore, we have increased the probability of success for the debuff sleep for the skill Dark Explosion and made adjustments so that the basic skill can give a powerful attack even when other skills are on their cooldown. In addition, we have changed the design of the skill, Nightmare, so that it now has a lower cooldown as well as an increased probability to decrease the defense of all enemies, which allows it to be used in a greater variety of situations. So, uh, before, Dark Explosion attack with Dark Energy with a 35% chance to put the enemy to sleep. When the enemy is put to sleep, Caster's Combat Readiness is increased by 50%. And the skill doesn't dual attack now. She attacks with the explosion of dark energy, and the chance is 50% to put them to sleep. And when the enemy is put to sleep, we get the 50% combat readiness increase. That could be cool. I guess time to build Tenebrio on counter. <laughs> Just kidding. So that's going to be useful. You know, general, just just a general improvement to Tenebria. And then her skill three now goes to 85%. So from 75%. 
let's just go an extra 10% here. As a Tenebra user, I don't know if that's really just going to be like, yo D, we about to use her right now. <laughs> I can't say that that's gonna do that for me, but it does kind of make me raise a brow to be like, all right, <clears throat> Tenebria is actually a little bit better than what she was. And now with the higher chance to sleep, it does help for positioning. If I was going to build my Tenebria now because of this change, I would probably just build her fast so I can position for the, the AoE Death Break plus the Nuke. So then I can kind of use her as a support mage and just kind of fit her into a team comp where she works. Matter of fact, I think I actually have a team comp for this and I might actually play with this. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I can actually use this in my current comp after the Arbiter Vildred nerf. I don't know. It'll, it'll, it'll take some testing, but I'll let you guys know kind of how that pans out. Next up, we got Leo. I, that's crazy that Leo's actually getting buffed here <laughs> because, you know, it makes sense because ML Leo's coming out, so I understand. The probability of triggering Sparrow Dive has been increased after using the skill Fox Hunt. Additionally, the skill Flying Raku had its probability to inflict stun increased. This combined with a lower cooldown should allow Leo to make more threatening attacks. Alright, so uh, the new change with Fox Hunt attacks with a slingshot with a 100% chance to decrease defense. <whistles> and a 50 but wow, okay, well... Well then, and a 50% chance to use Sparrow Dive. That's going to be pretty good. He's pretty much going to chain all the time. Every other attack, right? Probability-wise, sometimes it's going to be more than that. But that's going to be pretty good, guys. When you look at this, plus the damage increase by 14%, Leo's going to be a lot more formidable uh, and be able to put a lot more numbers out. So uh, for people that are using Leo in situations like Banshee or in potentially even PvP situations, that's going to help you guys a lot. And in terms of his skill 3... Uh, Raku flies into the enemies like a bullet and attacks all of them with a 75% chance to stun for two turns. This is huge. From 50 to 75 is a big deal when, when we're talking about stun. So, Leo, again, more utility. A lot more utility when using him pretty much in all situations. You can use him, you know, kill wars, PvP arena, whatever. And now with the higher chance to stun, this could definitely help you guys out if you guys are setting up for positioning. And then you guys could definitely play with this here if you guys are looking to potentially one-shot an enemy hero. All right, guys. So next up is Tuxedo Mask. Uh, oh, I mean, I mean Roman. Yeah. Tuxedo Mask's skill Horizon was seen as attractive but difficult to use due to the ineffectiveness of gravitation. That's right. Uh, the skill event Horizon was also modified so that when the enemy is buffed, the caster is granted increased combat readiness, allowing them to attack more frequently. To compensate for the low effect chance of gravitation, which only had a 50% chance of decreasing combat readiness, the number of times the enemy's combat readiness can be decreased has increased from two... What? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, attacks all enemies with the magic circle with a 50% chance each. To decrease combat readiness by 20% four times. Four times. Not one, not two, four. That's an 80% combat readiness decrease. That's pretty stupid. That's pretty much a lockdown. We're talking RNG. If you landed this twice, that's half the combat readiness bar. Four times, they're pretty much going back to zero. Almost. Almost. I mean, you know, it's not 100%, but almost. All right, so his uh, Event Horizon shoots a powerful gravity sphere at all enemies, dispelling all buffs and increasing combat readiness of the cast by 50%. Damage stealth increases. The enemy is inflicted with two poison effects for two turns, and the caster's combat readiness increases an additional 30% when the enemy is buffed. Okay, okay, okay. So we're talking an 80% combat readiness increase. And with that, you're basically, I'm, I'm looking at Roman like basically Celestial Mercedes. For those of you guys who have experienced Celestial Mercedes cleave comps, Celestial Mercedes basically gives herself 80% and gives herself another turn. Well, it doesn't grant herself another turn per se protects, but if you have your team speed tuned well enough or your Roman is fast enough, he's basically giving himself another turn. So... Roman, 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 Tuxedo Mask, is going to be a lot more effective in a lot of situations. So I'm just going to say this. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I mean, I'm probably going to build my Roman now. <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if you started to see Roman um, in an AO situation because A, the strip for the poison exchange is dope. Plus the fact that he gives himself another turn. So with the strip into gravitation... With the decreased combat readiness by up to four times for 20%, you know, each hit is huge, guys. That's a big deal. 
it's a really big deal. Like, before, the 50% is just kind of like whatever, because, like, the gear that you had to have to get him to get another turn was a little astronomical, and why would you use him over anybody else? But now, I think Roman has the potential to be a very key player, based off of what I'm reading here. For all my tuxedo mask users out there, with the one in the hand, they've been hoping that Roman will be better. He's just got a lot better. A lot better. So, that's going to be big. I, I think I'm probably, I'm, I think I'm at six star Roman today. Because <laughs> that's huge, because that actually would be really good for the team comp that I'm, I've been trying to figure. Because I've been trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with Arbiter Vildra's slot. And if I can get the double turn with the CR pushback, plus the poison, he might just be the guy. i got to look at Roman's multipliers and see what they are to see how I'm going to position him, whether or not he's going to be damage or just support or kind of a hybrid. But yeah, let's go. Let's get it on! Alright, so next up is Rikoris. So, compared to Cheer, Flash Cut was lacking in performance and Quick Pierce was not good enough to make up his, for his, for this performance issue. We have also adjusted Quick Pierce's probability of decreasing the enemy's defense when the caster is granted a speed buff so that Rikoris has a clearer role as a tank and a support unit. So, before it attacks with the spear with a 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns, effect chance is increased when the caster is granted increased speed. So, let me just say that this is good. You know, with this quick pierce, because Recorus always pretty much has speed up if you're running him in a team comp. And because my Recorus, my Captain Recorus, is pretty much almost full skill. And like I invested molas into him because I wanted to, I wanted him to work so bad. Like I was using him in my initial, you know, A11 team, and I was like, yo, for PvP, he would be dope just because the way his kit, his kit was set up. But then he was just really lackluster, and his stats were just garbo okay so um, that's going to be a, a a welcome change now with the quick pierce with the speed increase that's gonna just it's going to be primarily more for pve if you want to use them in a pve situation the reason i don't see pvp is because it's gonna if you're relying on that to to be for pvp then you would need somebody to buff speed of he, ahead of him to get the increased chance and you're waiting too many turns for him to really come into play does that make sense unless you're running a full tanky comp like let's say everybody on the team is tanky and you're going to be in the fight for a long period of time then of course it could be better now when we look at captain recorus they increased his healing by 100 percent for supreme spear Damage increased by 41%. That's huge. So he has some sustainability here. And from the looks of it, he actually got some stat increases too from his runes. So my, my recourse, like I said, is done, guys. So the problem that I, another problem that I had with recourse is he was just too squishy, man. That dude, bro, that dude folded up like a lawn chair, man. He's like, hey, my name is Record. And he turns into a chair. I'm like, damn, dude, I didn't know you were a transformer. That's crazy, man. But he was super squishy. So the mineral rune, uh, so now he has a defense increase by 15%. Health rune, he has a health increase by 20%, which is cool. So this is going to make up for some of that. So like they said, in order to enable Captain Recorus to more effectively fulfill his role as tank, the defense and health increases gained from rune enhancements will be increased. Well, it makes sense. We have improved him by increasing the amount of health. He can recover proportional to his max health by 100% so that he can survive longer, which is good because his healing before was... But now it's it's a lot better. So next up is Raz. Now this is a big deal. Now I'm gonna talk to you guys about Raz. Although Raz is our protagonist, not many heirs use him because he lacks a clearly defined role. Changes have been made to Raz's awakened skill, which now enhances his basic skill, X Slash. After awakening, dispelling buff is added to the skill effect, which will be very helpful to our heiress in the early stages of his adventure. Also, basic version of the skill will now have the same effect as the awakened version, and the amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health, allowing him to survive for a longer time. Alright, so. With Raz now, he strongly attacks all enemies with the Sword Storm, recovering health and decreasing and increasing defense of the caster for two turns. Damage dealt and amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health. So now they've also changed it to where his skill becomes X Slash and attacks with the sword with a 75% chance to dispel a buff. Damage dealt increases a core. Wow. Okay. Okay, Raz, I see you. So let <laughs> If I'm reading this correctly, so now he strongly, it's sword of the air, right? I'm, I'm assuming it's his third skill. He attacks all enemies with the sword storm, recovering health and increasing defense of the caster for two turns. Damage dealt increases proportionally to his max health and, and 75% chance to strip. Stupid. 
for... <laughs> okay. All right, Raz. Raz just became legitimately one of probably the most effective bruisers in the game. Wow. All right. That was a good talk. Plus team attack. Yeah, Raz is ridiculous. Like, with this change, like, this is really significant because... You know, and I'm looking at this from an arena standpoint. Like, forget about PvE. Like, where the hell are you using this in a PvE situation? But, like, just from a PvP standpoint, you're talking about a hero, like, although his multipliers are low, because they're only, like, you know, 4% of his max health, you know, when he, he, you know, does this thing. So, he'd have to have a lot of HP to really do significant damage. Well, but just the overall utility of Raz now. You're talking overall utility. You're talking he can strip, AoE strip, 75% chance, buffs his own defense, and recovers health. So now he has sustainability, a strip, and the team attack with the skill 2. Like, way better than what he was before. Way better than what he was before. So, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of troll comps with Raz. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would not be surprised. That's pretty funny, actually. Now, if they just increase his multipliers, like, I think he, he could definitely be disgusting. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Here's the thing, though, guys. With this Raz change, ML Raz is coming. It, it's just going to happen. If you guys have noticed a pattern, right? They buff Ken, you know? They buff Ken and, you know, so that Ken, ML Ken was comparable. Leo got a buff today with, you know, ML Leo coming. And now Raz gets a buff. ML Raz soon, maybe. ML Raz soon. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. Again, low multiplier, but I still think with this utility here with X Slash, with the 75% chance to dispel a buff, it's going to be pretty nice. So now they talked about these adjustments are mainly for heroes, which are used for PvE content, which will be updated on August 8th, two weeks from now. Uh, we are very cautious about adjusting PvP related heroes, and details will be shared on July 31st, along with future balancing plans and policies. Adjustments of heroes, especially the nerfing of heroes, will be long enough. Asked to receive feedback from our heirs, but buffs will be updated as fast as possible. So, that's good there. Adjustment details for the following PvP heroes will be released on July 31st. So, buff expected is going to be Basar, Yufin, Lilibet, Lydica, and ML Kali. So, there's some buffs. Some more buffs coming. So, you guys can expect that. Yufin, I'm really surprised to see because Yufin was already strong. Uh, they're also going to be buffing Lilibet and Lydica and Basar, which is cool because ML Basar is coming. Which is going to be nice. And then the nerfs expected are ML Aramintha, Bale and Suzanne, ML Vildred, and Crimson Armin. Just like I called, guys. I told y'all, man. Listen, trust trust in me, man. <laughs> Except for my patch predictions. They kinda, they're kind of wonky. All right, my patch predictions are kind of wonky. <laughs> Don't judge me. But that's who I figured because these are like the, the positional heroes. So for my Crimson Armin users... I'm sorry, guys, but it just is what it is. ML Aramintha, I don't really understand. She's pretty not that great, you know, once you get around her. And Bale and Suzanne, I understand. It's just really hard to work around ML Bale and Suzanne because you put Bale and Suzanne in your team, it stops a lot of stuff. And there's only a few, well, there's a lot of ways to counter it. But I, in terms of the general player base, it's hard to counter, right? And Bale and Suzanne is a big thing, so I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I can't really say what I anticipate for these heroes because they could be nerfing these dudes into the ground. But these are all significant changes. I'm happy that Judge is not getting nerfed. Woo! But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens to these guys next week. So <laughs> heroes that are expected to be nerfed will be adjusted to an optimum level to prevent these heroes from being ineffective. Thank you. Compensation and exchange related information will be announced when the heroes are settled. Players will be able to exchange for a Moonlight Hero of an equivalent star grade if a Moonlight Hero they own is nerfed. We will also take into account memory imprint level. However, there might be changes to these details when updated, so if so, we'll make sure that you know about it. Changes <laughs> possible. No, no, I'm sorry. So when balancing heroes, uh, there needs to be a consideration from various aspects. This upcoming balance patch was planned beforehand, therefore we announced the adjustments of the Moonlight Heroes earlier. Uh, we will be glad to have your feedback on this adjustment and also for future adjustments of Moonlight Heroes. Thank you. <laughs> from Super Creative and Smilegate, Smilegate signing out. But anyway, guys, uh, yeah, so these are some of the changes. Some of these changes are pretty good. Like this balance is in. This is, 
boy, that's going to be crazy. Raz is going to be fun to play with. I don't, you know, Raz is not going to be game breaking by any means. I was just exciting to, I was excited to actually see Raz in a better version of himself with some actual utility. Some of these changes, I'm like, eh, whatever. Like, Ludwig is cool. Like, yeah, he's got the penetrate defense. But, again, even if he's invincible, you could still CC him, reduce his attack, you know, whatever. So, I'm kind of curious, you know, to see what, people, what my Ludwig users are doing. I'm going to kind of open that up to you guys. Tenebria, I'm kind of whatever. Leo's going to be a little bit more effective. And then Roman, of course, I'm really excited to see what he can do. And then I might give Recourse and Captain Recourse another shot after this change. But heroes I'm most interested in playing with after seeing these notes are probably Raz, Captain Recourse, Leo, Roman, and Bale. But I don't have Bale. So if I had Bale though, Bale would definitely be at the top of the list. So my Bale users, I think you guys should be really happy. I think it. I really on the borderline. I think say that this might have been overtuned a little bit. Okay, this might have been overtuned. So I would enjoy this because this is gonna be dope. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of fun, man. So make sure you guys play with this because that's probably the most exciting change here, outside of you know some other stuff. But. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about these changes. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below, and I'll be happy to assist. And with that being said, guys, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.